Hello Achievers, today I am with a new amazing expert, he is John Gray, I'm sure you know him, he is with me to answer my question, he's a relationship expert and also the author of the worldwide book Men are from Mars, Women are from Venus, you can find this book in every language, so in French it is Les hommes viennent de Mars et les femmes viennent de Venus. Hello John. Oh, hello, hello. How are you today? Very good, thanks. And I have a lot of questions to ask you, but my first question is, who are you and why did you uh, become a relationship expert? Well, actually, when I was in my 20s, I'm in my 60s now, so yeah. 40 years ago, I was a celibate monk. <laughs> and my brother became bipolar and spirituality did not help that. So I stopped being a monk and I came to California and studied psychology, yeah. hoping that would help. Helped a little bit. Eventually he committed suicide, uh, but I developed uh, lots of skills in psychology and realized I'm very talented in counseling couples particularly. Then later on in my life, the last 12 years, I really discovered actual uh, supplements and nutrition that could help him and have helped thousands of people who have bipolar, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, sleeplessness, libido, all of those things dramatically affect our relationships. Mm. And more and more as people fall in love, they begin to exhibit a little bit of the symptoms of bipolar, schizophrenia, which means that one day they're so loving and the next day they're not. Mm. And relationship skills are very important to support lasting love, but also nutrition as well. But we always have to focus first on relationship skills. Yeah, and we will talk about uh, nutrition just after. Um, why, why it's so important for you to, to manage and build a good relationship? Why did you decide to focus on relationship? Well, I think as, as uh, when I was studying psychology and I counseled couples, uh, it was, I'm just very good at it. I, I'm in a sense, I'm a rebel. Uh, still, to this day, the universities often reject my ideas even though the most popular psychology ideas in the world, some therapists accept them because they see their clients get better. But unfortunately, in the universities, they're trying to convince people, yeah. all the time trying to convince that there's no differences between men and women, when it's <laughs> yeah. so obvious that men and women are different. And my message is not to say, oh, men are that way, or oh, women are that way, but it's to have a positive connection, to understand in a positive way our differences when they show up. And if we have a positive way, non-judgmental way of looking at our differences, we can keep our hearts open and love can thrive and we can easily or more easily, more effectively communicate better if we have a better sense of how my partner thinks and feels maybe differently from me. Mm. So what are the, the secrets of communication? Well, the first secret is to really realize that we are different. Yeah. And it's as if men are from Mars and women are from Venus, yeah. like a whole other planet. So one of, the big, uh, one of the big differences, and there's a very funny video on YouTube that people can check out, and it's yes. called, It's Not About the Nail. Okay, it's okay. not about the nail. And it's a woman with a nail in her forehead talking okay. to her husband and complaining, I have a headache. And he says, well, maybe if you took the nail out of your head. And she says, it's not about the nail. I just want you to hear me. There's a time and a place to solve a problem, and men particularly like to solve problems and yeah. feel good. But women often want to just talk about problems, talk about their feelings. Now, not every woman, but when there's communication problems, which is so much of the time, one of the ways that women, when they're stressed, can feel better is talk about what's bothering them. Yeah. So they talk about it and they talk about it, and if they talk to a man or their husband, he listens and he tends to go, well, don't worry about that. Well, that's not a problem. Well, don't make such a big deal out of it. Let's just forget it. Well, I'll handle that for you. Well, don't cook the food like this, cook the food like that. Well, don't take this road, take that road. In our mind, if there's a problem and you're upset, you just solve the problem. Action, or you have a, action oriented. Action oriented. And women certainly can solve problems. Often people misinterpret my message by saying that women can't solve problems. That's nonsense. But men's first reaction to stress is what can I do to fix it? What can I do to solve it? And a woman's first reaction, unless she has to solve something right away, is let's talk about it. Particularly when there's nothing you can do about it mm. right now, let's at least talk about it. So I taught those ideas over 30 years ago, and even then it was controversial. And people went, but no, that's silly. It's not silly. 
it's like this is a, a biological need that women have. And now I have the science behind it, which is why I've continued to write books on the same subject, is that science keeps giving us more and more information. And one of the differences between men and women on a biological level, and this is every man and every woman fits into this category. Whereas for men, they have 30 times, at least 30 times more testosterone than women. Yeah. Testosterone is all about faster reaction time. It's all about solving problems. So if there's stress, a man's testosterone goes up and it makes him want to solve the problem. And if he can't solve the problem, then he feels frustrated and he becomes uncomfortable and he begins to suffer. So for women, they don't have the testosterone levels that men have. Their bodies aren't designed that way. Women cope with stress by another hormone, not testosterone. Yeah. It's called oxytocin. It's friendship hormone. It's a love hormone. It'd be like if somebody scary walks into the room, you could put up a sword. That's testosterone, fight yeah. or flight. Or you could say, here are some cookies. Let's be <laughs> friends. Let's find out what's the problem. Let's talk about it. That's the oxytocin response. And women all have this oxytocin response that regulates stress. Testosterone doesn't lower stress for women. Testosterone lowers stress for men. What lowers stress for women is oxytocin. And oxytocin is produced by romance, by communication, by affection, by empathy, by when a man sees into a woman, huge amounts of oxytocin gets produced. That's why women want to share. So if they can share what's positive or share what's negative, it doesn't matter. Just see what, who I am. And if a man sees that and feels and, and, in a loving, non-judgmental way, then women begin to glow. Oxytocin levels increase, stress levels go down. So to me, understanding the biology, even and while I was teaching this, it made such a difference. So now if my wife's upset about, oh, we're late, I just, I don't say don't worry about it. I don't try to talk her out of it. I don't say it's not a big deal, they can wait. I just go, yeah, we're late, <laughs> and that's it. Don't have to talk her out of what she feels, because that's what men think would be the solution, is to talk her out of her feelings rather than to support her feelings. It's mm. like, oh my gosh, we are late. And how, how did you discover that? Oh, the way I discovered that. Well, <laughs> I was uh, 30, 30 years ago, I'm in marriage counseling, you know, counseling couples. Yeah. And what I would see all the time is men would just interrupt women. And I said, just try not saying anything. Try not saying anything the whole session and let me ask her questions. And women would feel better. But you did ask an important question. Why did, how did I discover it? This was my discovery and this was 35 years ago, I had a nice little counseling practice and I made one change. I decided that I was going to practice not fixing women because I would hear women say, it wasn't like I invented this, women were saying, I don't want them to fix it. I don't want them to fix it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to practice and not interrupt. And instead of giving solutions, I'm going to ask more questions, ask more questions. Now, after doing this for about a month, my counseling practice was sold out and then I had a waiting list. And the people that were coming to me, I said, it was women. And I said, why did you pick me as your therapist? And they said, oh, my friend told me about, told me about you. And I said, what did they say? They said, they said, you're a therapist who really cares. Now, the interesting thing is I've always really cared. Yeah, but you just changed the way you do it. That's thing. exactly it. Change the way I demonstrate my caring because I began to understand that women truly get great benefit by talking rather than always solving the problem. It's not that there's no problem solving, but first there's talking. Mm. And what do you think about the fact that some, some men are um, more used to speak and some, some women more oriented action? Do you understand my question? Oh, you mean when there's role reversal? Yeah. Okay, this, is, this destroys relationships today. And it's happening a lot to young guys uh, because young guys, here's a principle. If women said, we're turned on by men who walk on their arms upside down. Mm. All these men would be walking around this park on their arms upside down. Because what makes women happy, men are motivated to do that. Until they become disappointed and then they stop doing it. Because if she's not happy, why bother doing those things? So what women have put out this message that we want men to be more open and share their feelings and talk more. So men are now talking more and sharing their feelings more. And women come to me as a counselor and go, he talks too much. He has too many problems. I can't be turned on to him. So as a man and a woman, it's, it, it doesn't work. 
that what works, and I don't want to be too extreme here because I'm not saying there's any one way, but what I've seen as a marriage counselor over and over and over, when a man talks more than the woman in a relationship, they stop having sex. Why? Because men who are talkative, usually they're interrupting their wives, they're trying to fix her, or they're complaining about their days, and she might start to complain, and he says, that's nothing, let me tell you about my day, <laughs> and then he complains more. These men, after a while, their wives don't want to talk. And sometimes if I talk to women in an audience, and women say, well, I don't like to talk at the end of the day, I say, well, what would have happened if you did talk? Well, my husband would go on and on and talk more. I don't have time for that. So many women have never even had the experience of being fully heard and have somebody hear them and ask questions and empathize with them. And so these women are often confused. And so they say, I want men to be like my girlfriend. Then when he becomes like a girlfriend, she's not turned on to him. And when he becomes like a girlfriend, his male hormones are no longer being stimulated and he loses his attraction for her. So the average length of relationships today with young people like you is five years. That's the average. It takes about three years and then all the passion goes away and two years to figure out how to get out of this relationship. So how to get back the, the passion? To get back to passion is to understand passion is like a magnetic force. Yeah. You know, I, I see my wife, you know, and I just feel like, oh, I want to connect. I want to get closer to her. If I'm with her all the time, I don't feel that way. There's a hormonal change that happens when you spend too much time with your partner. Because see, for men, you have to have distance to want to cross. That's see, amazing. if you want to get close, you have to pull away and get close again. If you even think about the act of sex, you get close and you pull away. It'd be very, very boring if you just went there and stayed. So it's <laughs> in and out, in and out. This action of going in releases testosterone. Then a hormone called oxytocin gets released in his body, which feels good. It's love. You go in, you feel love, but oxytocin pushes testosterone down. So he has to pull back to rebuild the testosterone. Men have to stay being men. They can't just do everything women want them to do. So here's an example. A man, he, his girlfriend says, oh, you're busy doing the computer. You're busy watching TV. We should be sharing together, doing things together. He wants to please her. So he starts talking about his day. They start having conversation, whatever. What will happen is he doesn't take time apart. See, when a man comes home, the biggest complaint women have is, oh, he comes home, he ignores me. He watches a football game or he reads a newspaper. Or he spends time alone on the computer. And she's going, why isn't he interested in me? Why is he sitting on that couch ignoring yeah. me? Well, there's a reason for that. And young men don't know that reason. Women just go, you shouldn't be doing that. If you go to these poor people in the Scandinavian countries, there's no passion at all because men are feminized. Men are taught, hey, I've been working all day. You should be working with me. As if the man works hard during the day, he uses up his testosterone. See, women can't understand this. A man uses up his testosterone. Wow. He has to rebuild his testosterone. How do you rebuild testosterone? You relax. You relax and you don't do anything serious. Hobby, something fun, something enjoyable. You don't solve serious problems and you don't have intimate conversations. You just let yourself have kind of an empty mind and relax whatever you're doing. And that is what rebuilds testosterone. Now I'm not saying he should ignore her all evening. Yeah. He just needs his time. So that in my book, Men Are From Mars, was called the cave time. Is that men on Mars, they tend to all have caves. At the end of the day, you go to your cave. There's a sign on the cave that says, do not enter or be burned by dragon. Which is women don't read that sign because they don't understand men are different. And they think, oh, I'm supposed to make conversation with him. And quite often women will then ask us lots of questions and we feel we're supposed to answer them. But what's really, what she really needs that often she doesn't even know. You have to recognize if people aren't happy, they don't know what they need. It's people think, I know what I need. If you're not happy, you don't know what you need. Mm. And that's why you have to come to somebody to get help. So women will say, I want them to talk. I want them to open up. I say to the woman, <laughs> no, you don't. What you need is to open up yourself. You need to share your feelings. Women would come to me 30 years ago and say, I want him, he's in his head. He's always analyzing things. I want him in his heart. I want to feel him. I say, I don't feel you at all, except you're just complaining. How about you opening up and show some love? How about you sharing? And she says, well, I can't do that because he'll fix it or interrupt me. He doesn't understand. And I said, well, that's what he needs to learn, not to be like a girl and open up. He needs to learn to be a man and be like an oak tree, stable, 
not whining and complaining, and learn how to listen and empathize. See, these are old-fashioned male values that are being lost today as young men are being feminized and told that they're wrong for that. Is that and then what happens is your average 40-year-old man's not even turned on to his wife. This is very common. You get married, you lose. You know, I'm 62 years old. You know, I have sex three times a week. I could have more, but you know, I need a little, if you have a little rest period in between, then you appreciate it more. It becomes too routine. But I have a libido every day. Uh, my testosterone levels are the same as when I was a young man. Your average man now today at 40 years old has the testosterone levels of a 70 year old man 30 years ago. Wow. There's a huge shift that's happening in the world. Men's testosterone levels are going down. At 50 years old, your average male today has half the testosterone levels he had as a young man. And we have to understand, you have to do masculine things. We're not women. We can't do this women's stuff and be men. And so there has to be an understanding. And younger men so much want to please the women. And the women just say, well, I want a girlfriend. I want somebody to chat with me. I want somebody to clean with me. I want somebody who's my partner doing things with me all the time. What do you mean you want to go off with the guys and drink some beer? You can't do that. You're married. Are you kidding? Of course he has to do that. See, men have always done this. For thou We've been on this planet hundreds of thousands of years. Look at what people have done during that time. Women are here. Men are here. And yes, this is a new age where we're coming closer together than ever before. Closer than ever before. But it doesn't mean that in becoming closer that we should lose our identity. We should harmonize with the opposite. Mm. That's what keeps the passion. So if you think about passion, it's a positive pole and a yeah, negative pole like a ma a and a magnet. And it goes like that. And if the guy becomes like a woman, then you're repelled. So you lose the attraction. And we just heard the dogs barking right then. Yeah. This is when couples argue and fight is because they're not knowing how to support each other's emotional needs. Now I talked about one need there. There's many of a man, which is give him space when he needs to take his space, give him space. Don't pester him about what he's thinking or what he's feeling. Give him a little time off. Flip side of that, women need intimacy, they need closeness. Create some romance for her at least every week. One romantic date, doesn't have to be over the top fantastic. Plan in advance. Men don't realize waiting to the last minute and saying, hey, what would you like to do tonight? He thinks that's romantic because he's saying, I'll do whatever you want. No, what romance is for women is when they can anticipate the date a week in advance, at least days to think about it. This is a big thing for women. Like for you, if you're thinking about big success, just thinking about big success or a big payment or a big, big yeah. interview, or whatever it is, <laughs> you know, it's anticipation. Mm. But for women, it's the anticipation of affection, of romance, of doing something she'd like to do. And again, women expect men to be mind readers. Like I'm supposed to know what she likes. How can we know that? Often you say to her, what would you like? She says, I don't know. And if you know, then you're like Mr. Romantic. This is all unrealistic. So what you do a week in advance, you sit with her and say, let's think of some fun things next week that you'd like to do. And yeah. you can also say what we'd like to do, but then say, really, what would you like to do? And I'll pick the one that I'd like to do as well. Mm, that way, as a man, you know you're going to be successful. See, well, most men stop planning dates because they know, is she going to like this? Does she like that? I don't know if she likes it or whatever. And part of that is women not understanding a man's need. If he's going the extra mile to take you out on a date, that you'd like to do, then make sure that you have a positive attitude the whole date. He's doing his best, he's dressing up, he's doing what you would like. Do what he would like and give him some love too. And how do you love a man? By helping him feel successful. So if you're going to a restaurant, he takes you out to eat and the beans are too salty, don't tell him. <laughs> Just like, you know, some women will go, oh, these beans are so salty. I've got so much better, I got a better recipe. And oh, I've got, my mother used to make beans better than this. She could talk the whole night about how bad the beans are. Because two women could do that and they'd all feel happy. Because talking about problems creates oxytocin and bonding, lower stress for women, and they feel good. Women feel good thinking, I can tell all the people in the world how bad that restaurant is. If, you, if you're with a man and you say all that, on a personal level, he's providing this to you. It's like he's the chef. It's like this is his restaurant. You wouldn't say that to the cook or the owner of the restaurant. You wouldn't, unless he was saying, please tell me what's wrong with my restaurant. On a romantic date, don't focus on what's wrong. There's other times to do that, but not on a romantic date. Just as on a romantic date, he should provide for her a sense of security, 
a sense of relaxation, he should take the time to find out what she would like and provide that for her. Now, does this mean every day of the week? No, this is one day a week. Mm. Just that's a special romantic date. Great. So. I, lo I love what you are saying. And I, love it. I have a lot of questions to ask you and a, more, a specific question. For example, I, I work with Julie, so we are a lot uh, in the same room, yes, in the yes, same yes, place. Yes, yes, uh, what, what is your advice? I don't know if you ever think about that. Have you ever thought about oh, that? Of course, of course. Well, couples who work together yes. often have, like children, if they're together all the time, you start becoming a little allergic to each other. You can become annoyed, you become irritated, yeah. you become bothered, and it's hard to feel passion for your partner if you don't have distance. So men have to take some distance, and that can be, you know, any kind of a thing. You can have some buddies you go out with once a week. You know, for, for example, for me, I have two men's support groups which means two, two uh, they meet once a month. So I just go hang out with the guys and we talk about issues that are going on in our life or we go on camping trips or we do something, just guys. Yeah. You need to be just around guys or you need to take some time to meditate separately on your own or have some exercise that you do. I go and swim in my pool for two hours, you know, build yeah. my muscles up. Anything a man does to build his muscles is gonna help rebuild his testosterone but he needs to rest afterwards. So you can't always be at the beck and call of your partner. What the ideal thing is to let your partner know, what my wife knows is I'm her emergency man. If she really needs me, I will say yes to anything she needs, but it needs to be emergency. She should know there's always a backup. That's what women need is to feel they're not alone. But at the same time, I'm not like doing everything she wants when she wants it. So we have a constant conversation, which you'll say, oh, would you help me with this? I said, is this an emergency? Or do you need it now? Or can I do it later? So you don't want to feel like you're always just doing what your partner wants. You should be doing what you think is the right thing to do. So you always have to come back to what do I think is the right thing to do, mm. as opposed to just- It is a, it is a question for, for, for our life. Yes, yes, particularly for men. See, for <laughs> men, we need to always be in control of ourselves. It's always about control for men. Because look at, look at the world, all the dysfunctional men are out of control. They don't know how to control their emotions. This is all that, San Quentin, I teach classes over at this prison right over the bay, San Quentin prison, killers, murderers, and I go in there. These are guys who don't think. They just emotionally react, and I teach them how to think. This is what men need to learn, is don't act without thinking. So much of today is, is about get in touch with your emotions and feelings. What people don't realize, this is for women to do. Men have to learn how to get in touch with their thinking and do the right thing. Only do things that you think make sense. And does it mean it will close up your feelings? No, what opens a man to his heart, to his love, to his compassion, to his empathy, is when he thinks what's the best thing to do, and he does that and somebody loves him for it, that opens his heart. Yeah. So women have the power to open a man's heart, without a doubt, but not by telling him to be like a girl, but being a girl herself, being a woman herself, who can open up her feelings, share her feelings in a way that doesn't make you the bad guy. And that's a whole new lesson. You see, for thousands of years, women have never talked to men. This is a new phenomenon. Why is there so much divorce today? Why is there lack of passion today? It's women talking to men. It turns men off. And then when he doesn't <laughs> hear her, it turns her off. She starts to feel like, I can't share. Go to any indigenous culture. I've been around the world now over 20 times looking at indigenous cultures, just seeing how men and women interact. Women never talk to men. They talk to women because women understand they're like the same person. Yeah. And men talk with men or don't talk with men. We hang out together. This is a thing that we've done for thousands of years. Why did women not share emotions with men? Because women's brains, women learn. If you get angry at a man, he gets angry back. We're like The part of us that has emotions is what's called the middle part of the brain. It's the monkey brain. No yeah. different from a monkey's. So you see couples when they're fighting or went divorced, they're just acting like monkeys. I mean, they're arguing about the silliest little things. You said this, well, you said that. You did this, well, you did that. Well, I didn't do this, but you did that. Well, you said all this silliness. And it's like, we have to realize that we all do it. I do it as well. It's a monkey brain, okay? This is the part of us. We don't want to turn it off because that's yeah. where the love is. But this is the human brain up front. This is what tells you what to share, when to share, who to share it with. So if I'm upset about something, I go talk to some guys. I don't go talk to my wife. If a man goes and talks about his emotions with his wife, about I'm scared at work, or I'm upset about this, or I'm mad at this person, 
what happens to her is she starts becoming afraid of you, or if it's fear, she starts feeling like your mother, and she reminds you over and over what you should do. So for women to share their emotions with a man makes you feel like a hero and makes her feel like she can depend on you. When men share their emotions, women feel like they're your mother. Let me give you a great example, which yeah. I used to tell to the feminists who said, oh, this is baloney, you know, men and women are not that different. I say, imagine you will have a romantic relationship. This happened to me in the first few years of my marriage. We went off on a retreat, uh, a getaway for a romantic getaway uh, to a condominium in the forest in another state. Well, we drove up there, it took much longer to get there. It was in the middle of the night. We had dinner before we got there. And in the restaurant, there was a magazine article about stalking bears. These are bears in this place where we were going to, which stalk human beings and kill them. Whoa. They get into your house and they kill you. And this, is, this was happening up in Oregon at that time. And we're thinking, this is silly. They said, no, this is real. And they were showing us. Then we arrive in Oregon in the middle of the night. We don't know where we are. There's no street lights. And we're like thinking, stalking bears. So we're both scared. Who wouldn't be scared? Not, you know, we're kind of laughing about it, but also scared. We get into our little house that we had rented. We found it in the dark with flashlights and get inside <laughs> real fast. Who knows, stalking bears. And then, and, and then it's like a movie. And then we heard noises outside. And we have bang, bang, bang. And we're like, holy mackerel. You know, fear rises in both of us. And I say to her, okay, honey, I'm going to check to see what it is. You just sit by the phone to call 911 if I call out to you. You know, that calls the police or whatever for help. And so I went out to look to see what this noise was. It was just a raccoon in the trash cans. But when I came back in, I said it was just a raccoon in the trash cans. And she went, oh, good. And that was really scary. I said, yes, it was. And she says to me, she goes, will you hold me? I'm still kind of scared. And I said, yes, I'll hold you. Now, what do you, what do you think happened next? We had the best, best sex of our life because she was feeling the hormones of me being the courageous one protecting her when we're in danger. So she felt cared for, not alone. Mm. And I'm feeling the courageous hormone testosterone in me, oxytocin in her. Oxytocin is produced when you feel you're not alone and you can depend on someone who will risk their life for you. And I'm over there risking my life for her. And that's testosterone. So I'm in the very male role. She's in a very female role. We had unbelievable sex. Now let's see how that could have been different. Let's say I said to her, <laughs> and a movie. Now, uh, this is the other side of it. So now I, we hear the noise, we're both scared. And I say to her, honey, I'm scared. Would you go out and check to see if it's a bear and I'll sit by the phone? And she goes out and checks. She comes back in. She's always oh, just a, a raccoon. And I say to her, Listen, I'm still kind of scared. Would you hold me? And she holds me. What's going to happen after that? Nothing. There's no passion hormones. I'm in the female. She's in the masculine. Now let's look at a modern relationship. The third thing. This is what happens to some women who become too masculine. They hear danger outside. Guy and wife right there. And she says, okay, I want you to sit in the chair and call 911. I'm going to go outside and check. Don't get up. Now what did she just do? She emasculated him. She cut off his balls. And he's this nice guy who goes, okay, I'll, whatever to make you happy, I'll do whatever it takes to make you happy. Mm. So women don't realize how they emasculate men. So what do you suggest in this, in this uh, case for, for, the, for the man? If she cuts off your balls, yeah. <laughs> you say to her, yeah. that's a good idea, but I think a better idea is for you to sit here and I'll go out and check. <laughs> don't be the girl. Yeah. And you know, women will say to you when you have an ar argument, what do men do in arguments, okay? if they don't argue back, which is unmanly. Just to get this, what it means to be a man. If a woman gets angry and you get angry back, you're a monkey. You're in your female side. Emotions are feminine. That's what men have to get. Compassion and positive emotions are both masculine and feminine. But when you're in, a, when you're in an angry mode, when you're sad and you're crying, when you're afraid, and sometimes it's a big problem, it's appropriate to go to your female side if you're a man. But see what happens in men is when you're emotional, yep. the physiological dynamic in your body is your testosterone is literally converting into estrogen, the female hormone. Your estrogen levels are going up. Your testosterone levels go down when you become emotional. Now there is a time and place. Men's brains are designed to become emotional when the problem is huge and they feel powerless to do anything about it. So it reinforces, whenever you get emotional as a man, you're reinforcing a million-year-old trend that I'm powerless to solve this problem. 
and you're, you don't want to reinforce that. You want to come back to, okay, take, take a deep breath, cool, calm, and collected. What is the best thing for me to do now? I'm starting to get angry. Take another deep breath and let it go and say to my partner, I need some time to think about what you just said and we can talk later. Yeah, yeah. Don't get into arguments because once you start getting angry or afraid and you put it into words, it's like writing it in stone and it doesn't go away quickly. So the men start getting in the fights and I used to do that with my wife. I'd be a good listener and then I would go in and give that solution. It's like putting your hand in an alligator's mouth and she chomps on you. And then you blame her for that and get mad at her for that. And you put your hand in that alligator's mouth. <laughs> when a woman's emotional, she doesn't have the ability to appreciate your solutions. Just keep that in mind. And what upsets a man the most is when you want to solve the problem and somebody goes, no, that's not, that's not a solution. You, what they'll say is you don't understand. You don't understand. Which, by the way, when we come back to communication skills, it's the worst thing a woman can ever say to a man is you don't understand. Well, another way you can do it without causing them to become defensive, just all monkey brain stuff. It just doesn't work either yeah. way. If you feel a man doesn't understand, here's another way to say it that doesn't make him defensive. You pause, just pause. Hmm, okay, let me try saying this differently. Now, if I say that to you, hmm, let me try saying this differently. What message do you get? That you didn't understand, but you don't feel blamed. I'm taking responsibility for not communicating effectively to you. Yeah. That's the number one rule in all communication classes. Yeah. Is so that you don't blame somebody else for not hearing. You take responsibility for what you said, and if they didn't get it, try another way. Try another way. And if you feel frustrated, then say, you know, I'm I need some time to figure out how to communicate this to you and then I'll come back and talk to you. And if a man's getting defensive in an argument, stop it right away. Today I'm appalled at these wimpy men who fight and hit their wives. These are like not manly. It used to be like men would never get angry at a woman or beat her or fight with her. You know, this is like such immaturity in men which is today we don't have role models, clarity of what it means to be a man. You're compassionate, you're caring, you want to solve the problem, you do the right thing. You don't just emotionally react. This is what training has been in all civilizations, like in the American Indians, one training to become a man at 14 years old. Now, I'm not recommending this. I have my better recommendations for modern myth. Yeah, it's but, my, it is my next question. So what do you suggest to help, uh, help you to to learn that. Yeah, toughen up as a man, okay? Stop listening to women trying to become what they want because they want you to become a girlfriend. So you need to have, you need to understand the history of masculinity. And this is what I was getting to, which is in an American Indian tribe, a boy at 14, 13, 14, that's what happens then is your testosterone levels increase five to 10 times. So that's when it's time to really own what it means to be a man. And when that testosterone increases, they had an initiation. And the initiation is they would take a, they take a, the whole village would be in a circle. You go through your initiation. They take uh, sticks from the tree and they pierce your breast. They pierce this. Yeah, painful. And they tie a rope to this, tie it together and throw it over uh, a limb and they slowly raise you up. And you cannot cry out and you can't make a face. And that's what these boys do. And that's what makes them into men. They learn how to endure pain. Nothing after that will ever cause them to be upset because they've learned to endure pain. You don't have to cry <laughs> out. Pardon? It is the odd way. <laughs> well, that's the extreme way. I don't, I don't recommend that stuff now. But what it is, what I teach men now to become a man is learn how to listen to a woman. Listen to a woman talk, share her feelings without getting emotional back. This is part of how the army does it. In the army, you train a, a young man who's undisciplined, reactive, immature, and you've got to make him more mature to go carry a gun and behave in a responsible way. And so what they do is they line him up and they taunt you. They say negative things about you. They, they humiliate you. I don't want to say the things that they say, but they'll embarrass you. And you have to stand there and not have any expression on your face. And if you have an expression, 50 push-ups. Don't give me attitude, 50 push-ups, till you learn to stand there and have no emotional reaction. 
Now, why do you have to have that? It's because when you're in war and you just see your friend who's just been, had his leg blown off, you lose control. And now you want to run out and kill somebody. You get monkey brain takes over. So you have to learn to control the monkey brain. You have to control your emotions. And this is particularly for men. What women have to do is need to learn to share their emotions in a way where people can hear. Now, if you want to share with a girlfriend, you know, women can hear each other as long as they're not blaming each other. Women are great at hearing your feelings as long as they're not feeling blamed. And then they'll look at you like, why can't you hear my feelings? Because you're blaming you. <laughs> She's yeah. talking about you. So women will be great at hearing somebody else's problem because they're not the problem. I'm great as a listener in therapy. I tell women, they say, why can't my husband listen to me the way you do? And I say for three reasons. One is you pay me. <laughs> Two is I know it's only 50 minutes. And the third, which is most important, you're not blaming me. <laughs> if you, you, all you're doing is complaining about your husband. Of course he can't hear that. You can't go to your partner and complain to them. What women can learn to do and I call it Venus talk, and this is how men can learn to strengthen their masculinity and not react emotionally in a negative way to women sharing their feelings. Yeah. And that is the Venus talk is you take 10 minutes twice a week and you go to your boyfriend or your husband and you say, I'm going to talk about my feelings for 10 minutes. First, I'll talk about my negative feelings, then my positive feelings, and I'll thank you because I'll feel better. I don't want you to say anything. I just want you to look my direction and ha make no comment. Don't say anything or do anything about it. You don't have to feel bad. You don't have to make empathetic noises. Just look my direction and I'm gonna share these feelings. You could also read the book, which has the little outline. You could ask certain questions, but simply put, what she has to do is learn how to share her feelings. See, women think they're so great at sharing feelings. Nonsense, they're great at talking about their feelings, but not actually connecting with their emotions associated with their feelings. So a woman could say, gee, I feel unsupported. Well, what does that mean? You're, you're at fault. But if she says, I feel frustrated, yeah, that emotion. is the emotion, get to the emotion. So I feel frustrated, and then talk about things in your life that are frustrating that have nothing to do with him. Yeah. And some women will say, well, I can't. All my problems are him. I said, well, no <laughs> wonder he can't hear you. You can't tell somebody that they're the problem of your life. You're the problem of your life, and you're using him as the, as the emergency man, the Mr. Fix-It. He's going to solve your problems and be a good listener for you. So you share your emotions. So frustration is the first one. Then disappointment is under that. What am I feeling disappointed about? A couple of minutes on frustration, a couple of minutes on disappointment, a couple of minutes on my concerns couple of minutes on my feelings of what I'm embarrassed about in my life. You know, I could be embarrassed I'm overweight. I could be embarrassed because I'm not making more money. I can feel embarrassed because I don't have more friends. I feel yeah. embarrassed that I didn't make that meal the other day. Whatever she's feeling embarrassed about, but it can't be you. She can't say, I feel embarrassed walking with you in public. <laughs> she can't say that. She can't say, I'm concerned you don't love me. What she can say is, I feel concerned that I'm too stressed out. I feel concerned that I'm so unhappy. I feel concerned that the weather's going to be bad. I feel concerned that yeah. my future is, I don't know what my future is. Nothing about you. Just her. That's what women have to learn is how to share your feelings without sounding like you're blaming. And women have never learned to do this on planet Earth. Yeah. That's why women never talk to men before, because a man can't hear you if you're blaming him. <laughs> so, 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 so now we want to connect this, and that brings back the passion. Because if she can feel feminine in your presence, oh my God, you get totally turned on after you learn to do it. And she gets turned on because the biggest oxytocin producer there is, is when a woman can share herself, her naked self, authentic self, no protections, share what's inside of her and have someone be loving towards her. Now it's not completely naked because she's not sharing her negative feelings about you. But what happens as she shares her frustrations and disappointments about other things, not about you, but about her life, what happens is you hear that, oxytocin levels go higher and higher, her stress levels go down, and then she has very few complaints about you. Then what she learns, that's step two, is once women have no complaints about their partner, then they learn how to ask for support. See, the way most women ask for support is they blame you. They say, you forgot to do this. How many times do I have to ask you? You've, you didn't do this. I'm having such a trouble with this. And blaming you as a way of getting you to do things. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. What works is asking a guy to do something with no sense of urgency. When you get around to it, what I love is this. Would you do that? And he says, yeah, I'll do that. And then assume he's going to forget in the beginning because guys, 
prioritized. The way our brains are is we tend to think of those things that have the <laughs> biggest emergency. If it's a little thing, why should I bother? But see, part of understanding women is when you do little things, it actually makes them feel more important. See, it's, it's like men will tend to do big things, and that's a big part of my message, and that's right there in Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, which is little things make a big difference. Because a guy, once, when, when he's dating her, he's doing little things because he's not going to do big things because I don't even know if I want to marry her. But once you marry a woman, you go, okay, now I want to do everything for her. I'm going to do the big stuff. I'm going to try to earn enough money. Big vacation. Big vacation, yeah. earn money, do this, <laughs> do this. Men are always striving. Even though women are making more money than some men today, he's still wanting to be this provider. It's inside of men. Because inside of a man, to make my testosterone, I have to feel that I'm making a difference in your life. And this is why so many masculine women are not married. They can't attract a man in their lives. It's because a man is not intimidated by that. They go, oh, men are intimidated by my power, my success, and my money. No, they're not intimidated. It's not fear, it's stupidity. Why do I want to be with somebody that doesn't need me? See, man wants to feel like a hero. Man wants to feel like I make a difference. And you ask these women who are single, and you say, do you need a man? They go, oh, no, no, I don't need a man. It'd be nice to have a man. It'd be good to have a man. I say, I don't want to be just nice to be have me around. I'm an, I'm not, I want to feel like I'm important in your life. Just like she wants to feel important, I want to feel important. And when you need someone, you depend on them, you're looking for help from them. That's what makes a man feel like, yes, I can, I'm drawn to her. Once again, it's the feminine energy is the part of us. There's two parts of, within each of us. One is I need help, and one is I don't need help. The one is independence, and one is dependence. The feminine energy is dependent. The masculine energy is independent. Now, ultimately what we want is a balance within ourselves of interdependent, and that's an adult relationship. That's an adult relationship. Yeah. But what women are doing today is they're trying to be men. Because you see, they're so attracted to independent men, they mistakenly think that men will be attracted to me if I'm independent. And men like to be your friend if you're independent because you're low maintenance. But we're not gonna be turned on to that for long. Because what turns a man on is feeling like I make a difference. And what turns a woman on is to feel that you make a difference in my life. Great. And uh, to add some, fem uh, yes, I will let you finish. Oh, this one little point yeah. on, on the Venus talk. Never just end with the negative emotions. Then spend just as much time on I, what I appreciate, what I'm grateful for. That's when you can talk about him. Let's talk about what you appreciate in your life, what you're grateful for. And if there's some problem that you've been talking about, access your intuition with a positive, I understand that, or I know everything's going to be okay, I know that I'm not alone, I know that I'm supported, I so much appreciate that you're listening to me, I'm already feeling better. You have to give that positive energy, otherwise he thinks, why are we wasting time talking about negativity? What's the point to it? Yeah. The point is, sharing what's ever inside of you, if you're a woman, dramatically increases this hormone oxytocin that lowers her stress, and Oxytocin is also the hormone that allows women to respond sexually. It is the hormone that's necessary for women to have climax, for women to long for sex, for women to long to be penetrated by a man. Oxytocin. It's great. Yeah, I'm reading a lot of books about food and I saw a lot of different point of view angles and so I'm a little bit lost with nutrition. What is your advice about how do we have to eat? Well, the first thing is that my expertise is relationships and about 12 years ago uh, when I turned 50, yeah. I uh, had Parkinson's and so I began researching to cure myself of Parkinson's and in doing that, uh, which I did using natural supplements. I discovered that there's a whole spectrum of brain disorders. Uh, there's ADD, ADHD, there's autism, autism there's uh, Asperger's syndrome, there's bipolar. All of these things all originate from impaired dopamine function in the brain. And I found natural remedies for this. Uh, one of the most important natural remedies for this is a form of lithium. It's called low-dose lithium, not what doctors prescribe. Doctors prescribe a form of lithium in doses that's toxic. What I recommend, and other holistic doctors recommend as well, for any type of thing in the brain, is that we understand that lithium is the mineral that regenerates your brain cells and protects your brain cells from toxicity, from neurotoxins, allows your brain to continue growing, and it also is the cofactor for making dopamine and serotonin in your brain. So it's amazing the benefits that I've seen by giving people 
a form of lithium that will cross the blood-brain barrier in small doses. So it's non-toxic, no side effects. And even when I say that, some people go, oh, but, you know, just saying non-toxic in high doses, if it's toxic in high doses, it must be bad. Everything in high doses is toxic. Salt, it's just a salt, a form of salt, that if you took high doses of salt, you'd get sick. And you don't even get that sick with lithium. So lithium is a super mineral. Nobody uh, talks about it because they associate with schizophrenia and bipolar because it takes away those conditions, but it has side effects if you prescribe it in toxic doses. Low dose lithium does the same thing for anybody. Makes your brain work better. So lithium orotate, magnesium orotate, calcium orotate, potassium orotate, zinc orotate. Zinc orotate is so important for for everything. I mean, every brain function requires zinc. And because our diet today has so much soy, corn, estrogen, the animals are fed grains rather than grass fed. This, what it does is it creates something called xenoestrogens in the body, false estrogens, and some of them are actually estrogens. And they will cause uh, the body to not absorb zinc. So what happens for men, for example, prostate cancer or, or expanding prostate gland causes men over 50 to have to get up many times in the night, all that. It causes low testosterone because your body can't absorb zinc if you've been taking all of being affected by all these corn and soy products on the market or just simply the hormones they put in animals. Yeah. So what happens in a relationship is not only do men lose their focus, so their wives start talking, we get distant, we lose our passion, particularly because we lose our testosterone levels. And, so you we know, can get back Oh yeah, I'm in my 60s and my testosterone levels are higher than any time in my marriage. They're higher than when I was a young man. How, do, the you, same. how do you measure uh, your testosterone? By erections, okay. okay, and readiness to have <laughs> sex with somebody you love. Uh, so one symptom of low testosterone is Uh, I mean, first of all, if you have healthy testosterone, in the realm of healthy, you always wake up with an erection that faces up. You know, most 50-year-old men, it's kind of like straight or pointing down, and that's as much as erect. That's low testosterone. So the whole factor is literally, is the flag go all the way up? That's healthy testosterone. <laughs> We can measure the angle. Yes, measure the angle, and you know your testosterone <laughs> okay. levels. And even still, another thing that can be a sign, even in spite of that, can you be fully up? in the presence of someone you love deeply, like your wife. Mm. Because it's very easy for a man with low testosterone to go up with a stranger. And that's why pornography is so huge. It's one of the only ways some men can experience a rise in their testosterone. When you're aroused, your testosterone levels go very, very high, so you rise up. But you have to have plenty of testosterone to continue to rise up in the presence of someone you love. Because you see, it's like in every sexology class, one of the most common stories is called the um, uh, uh, President Coover. Uh, it might have been another name. <laughs> I forget the president's name. But President Coover is visiting a ranch with his wife, and they're in separate, two different tours. And the wife, Mrs. Coover, is uh, witnessing these cows, uh, the bull, uh, creating babies in the cow, having sex with the cow. And they take one cow in, the bull sires the cow, take the cow out, they bring in another cow, he does it again. He does it again. And she says to the rancher, she says, can that bull do that all day long? He says, yes, all day long that bull can do that. And she says, tell that to Mr. President Coover. And then so President Coover comes by and he says, you know, your wife wanted me to mention to you that that bull siring that cow can do that all day long. And he says, but can he do that all day long with one cow? And they said, no, no, it has to be a different cow every time. Tell that to Mrs. Coover. <laughs> so, so man, If you're with someone that you don't love or know, a stranger, you can get it up, you can have sex, and then do it again and again and again. You know, I, I have some friends in big rock bands that I've counseled in the past, and they can get it up for 15 women in a night. Okay, they have groupies, and they'll come in one after another, 15-minute appointment. Boom, boom, boom. But they can't get it up with their wives, and that's why they're talking to me. You see, low testosterone easily rises up in the presence of non-relational sex, meaning I don't know you. But if it's someone I do know, it's different hormones that get produced. Okay. Oxytocin gets produced. Oxytocin is the love hormone. So if you love the person you're with, to keep it up, you have to have healthy testosterone levels. And that is the secret of health, longevity, good health. You know, married men who have sex three times a week are the healthiest men on the planet. And this is proven big studies. They live 10 years longer on average. Yeah. They don't get the cancer, the heart disease. 
it's all about getting it up. There was one hospital back in the 90s where they were curing heart disease in men by teaching them how to have sex with their wives, just learning good sexual technique. But it's not just that. Good sexual technique is one thing, but we have to make sure we get zinc absorption yeah. to make the testosterone. We have to sort of back off from the estrogens. There's Chinese herbs, three Chinese herbs that will kick the estrogen out of your body. Yeah. There's, there's uh, herbs from Bangkok, Thailand, uh, which is more sex in that <laughs> city than anywhere else in the world, but they grow in that region. It's a root, kind of like a potato. It's called Tongkat Ali. Tongkat <laughs> Ali will bump your testosterone levels 400%, like in a week. So where, where we can find it, uh, every of these um Nutrition, well, nutrition. different different nutritions and yeah. herbs and so forth. And I would never depend on these things except to kick start the body, get it back into shape, start getting the zinc in the body is something yeah. you need to, zinc orotate would help dramatically uh, in the long run because that's something that's a food. The herbs you use just to kick your body back into shape. The, the myomin, which is probably one of the most popular herbs on the internet, myomin, M-Y-O-M-I-N. Uh, myomin is proven to kick those estrogens down and men who have belly fat for example that's also you know if you have low testosterone belly fat <laughs> if you're a man and you you can't look straight down and see your business you've got low testosterone and estrogen stores fat in your belly and if you have high estrogen your testosterone levels keep going lower and lower and lower so what you want is to kick the estrogen out you need some herbs to help bump up your testosterone and you need a good zinc supplement so that your body can make the testosterone. And three, six months later, you don't need all those herbs. You just need good zinc supplement every day because we are being exposed in the environment to estrogens all the time. It's hard to avoid them. So we need to help the body to absorb zinc better because estrogens inhibit zinc absorption. Zinc orotate is one of the, the best zincs in order to absorb yeah. uh, the zinc. So that's kind of a picture for men. It also works for women. The same thing happens with women's libido and so forth. But there's other herbs for women when it comes to their sexual desire is that it all has to do, particularly as they're getting older, but even a younger woman, they have hormonal imbalance. And when the estrogens come in from the environment, they interfere with healthy estrogen, which makes you want to be penetrated and interferes with healthy progesterone that keeps your mind calm. So women are too stressed and they're overwhelmed and often they can't enjoy sex fully. And so th there's a product from Korea that I recommend, which is uh, three Chinese herbs. Uh, and can, and that, can we find more information for a new website? Yes, what I do at my website is about 10 minutes on all these different products I'm talking about. So people can go to marsvenus.com. Yeah. Uh, they can even purchase them there or they can go other places to purchase them. They're all online. Uh, the one product that isn't available on long altogether is the super minerals for men or super minerals for women but I since nobody had it I put it together in a product which in is a, a package it's yeah. a package so people can just get all those minerals mm -hmm. and literally if you've got ADD ADHD that's what I've done every day for the last 12 years to keep my Parkinson's at a very big difference distance if I don't do it for about a week if I go off of it for a week then I'll start getting some of my Parkinson's back uh, wow. for whatever reason and, um, but I, I'm completely healthy because of it and it's not just those are the supplements, but then we also, you talked about diet. Yeah. And the problem with food today is, and basically every good diet, I just come back to the simplicity of a good diet, basically is healthy fats, healthy meats, and healthy carbohydrates, just healthy. And everybody's got a little different balance of everything, but the bottom line is junk food, processed sugars, interfere with brain function, libido, hormonal, hormonal balance, all processed foods. And now people are so out of balance, they can't digest wheat, so many people, so gluten intolerance is very common, so you have to take that out of your diet until you find your health again. Uh, so basically, your, your good diet is proteins, fats, carbohydrates, three times a day in moderate amounts. And that's it. There's no big special dynamic thing to it. Stay away from the junk foods. The junk foods cause, we, we go to them because we're under stress. When you're stressed, your hormones are out of balance or you're not making enough brain chemicals, your cortisol levels go up, then your body can't digest fat. And so what happens is if you're, there's three body types. There's the muscular body type. They tend to gain weight in their 40s and beyond. There's the round body types right at puberty. They're gaining huge amounts of weight or even for childhood. If they have too much estrogen and they have hormonal imbalance, they get fat. If they're mesomorphs, they're more muscular, skinny waist, big shoulders, they get the fat around 40 years old if they, if they, and they often get heart attacks by the time they're 50 due to all this high estrogen, low testosterone in their bodies. 
Then there's the, me the ectomorph body type, which doesn't have a lot of muscle, doesn't have a lot of fat cells, and so they can eat a bad diet and they don't gain weight, but they get skinnier and skinnier as they get older. But they're not processing their fat. Because if you're if you're stressed, your body can't burn fat for well, energy. What, uh, uh, what types? I am opening to you. Oh, your body, your yeah. ecto, your yeah. your ecto meso. So you're thin, but you also have muscle mass. You're secondary, so you have good muscles, but you're primarily ecto. Okay. So you won't have weight problems if you eat a poor diet till you're in your 40s. <laughs> yeah, my, my father have a, has a yeah a beautiful belly. Yeah, the, the belly <laughs> and the belly is estrogen. It's not a yeah. see. There's guys in gyms and they're mesomorphs. They work out. They love to work out and build their muscles up because they get such a big response and they need to. Their body has more muscle cells to feel good. They have to work out and use their bodies. And as they're using their bodies. Over 40, you see them, they get fatter and fatter and they work out and working out doesn't do anything because it's not about using your muscles, it's about hormonal balance in your body. Mm. You've got to kick those estrogens out of your body. So the weightlifter's diet is often steak, low fat steak, because you're getting protein there and you're, um, uh, also you get zinc, it's a big thing. See, weightlifters, you need lots of testosterone and zinc. So you get your meats, which are high in zinc, low fat, then they eat broccoli and they eat brown rice. Brown rice is, is a good carbohydrate because it doesn't turn right into sugar right away. It also is high in a mineral called silica. Silica is what allows your body to absorb calcium and build bones. And your strength is according to the strength of your bones. If you have weak bones, your body, uh, you'll have weak muscles. It's all about strong bones. Because see, right now I can turn a jar and if I use my willpower, I could break all my fingers off. Mm. But your brain stops you. We have much more strength than we know because the brain is constantly stopping our strength because we might break a bone. And so if you have strong bones, you can then develop great strength mm. along with good breathing. It's amazing. We love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so, so back to diet. You know, the main thing is get rid of the bad stuff. Eat moderately. And this idea of eating every two hours, not a healthy thing, every three hours. If somebody's obese, it can make them healthier than dying of obesity, but it doesn't lengthen your life. What lengthens your life and makes you strong and, and, and clear and, and, and not have sugar cravings is when you get to a certain level of health, then your body doesn't need to eat for five to six hours. When you eat the right nutrition, your body doesn't need to eat for five to six hours. After four hours, after you've eaten a meal, four hours later, the first two hours, your body breaks down carbohydrate. The next two hours, your body breaks down fat. Then there's no food. That's the point where your brain releases. After four hours after a meal, your brain releases growth hormone. And that's what regenerates your cells. That's why I'm in my 60s and I look so young and I'm so vibrant and I have a sex life and all those things because I make sure that I'm creating enough space between my meals in order to release the growth hormone. Lots of people are taking growth hormone, you know, which ultimately could have all kinds of problems, but short term, if I didn't know what I know and I was 70 or 80 years old, I'd be injecting growth hormone too, because you lose, you build muscle mass, you lose weight, you get your vitality back, everything works better with growth hormone. It regenerates your body. But if you eat every three hours, then you're producing insulin to digest that food, you don't release growth hormone at all. So as people are aging today, Everybody's growth hormone levels are going down, 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 whereas mine stay the same. Testosterone stays the same. You stay a young man. You know, you do wear out. I mean, your body does age and so forth, but you have all the vitality of a young man. And you'll see this in many indigenous cultures where the food is still nutritionally dense. Now, why is it that I can eat a meal and go for four to five hours, six hours without feeling hungry at all? It's because the food I eat has got all the nutrients in it and your regular food doesn't have the nutrients. That's why I supplement my diet with supplements, extra nutrients, so that when I have a meal, I'm getting all the vitamins, all the minerals, and good quality fats, good quality proteins. Wow. So I start my day with a superfood shake. You know, everybody needs a superfood shake, in my opinion. You, you know, you don't need too many calories in the morning because your body's not making a lot of enzymes. So just get easy to digest protein, easy to digest fats, eat, uh, carbohydrates that are slow to rise and suddenly you've got this amazing little 200 calorie drink that will last you for six hours. There's mm. nothing better for your health than yeah, to yeah, feel I, that health. I, I will try everything we are, we are talking about. So uh, how, how long I, I have to wait according to you to have maybe the more uh, the, uh, the, the first uh, result? 
Oh, a week. A week, if not wow. three days. So I and will, then. I will uh, try everything, and I will do, I will do a review one month after, for example. Excellent. Do the superfood shake, and you can follow the formula. What I suggest is, I've already mixed it up. It's a product: superfood shake and super minerals. Yeah. Just those two things will make a world of difference. Greater clarity, greater energy, wow. and you start to feel that you can go five, six hours without eating. Now, what you want to do is add to your shake two things. Can we order that in France? Yeah, you can order that in France. Wow. Okay. And you can also look at the ingredients and find the ingredients and put it together. But it's better, what I have is raw whey protein, raw casein protein, organically grown, goji berries for your vitamin C, all of your vitamins in there, coconut oil as your fat. Now, coconut oil is an amazing fat, but if you put it in a cold shake in the morning, it will clump up. So you can order on the internet. MCT oil. That's the most important thing in this, is you need a good fat. Everything about being strong and having lots of energy is healthy fats. Butters, avocado, and coconut oil, olive oil. These are all great things that we have lots of in our life. Not too much, but good amounts of that. That should be something we want to be able to burn that fat. And one of the greatest omega-3s, and we all need omega-3 for the brain, the easiest and the best for your morning shake is you go to the store and you buy chia seeds. You heard that word, chia? C-H-I-A. No. -I -A. Okay. They come from South America. They're very cheap. You buy a bag of chia seeds. You take a third of a cup and then you add two cups of water to it. That's it. Let it in a, in a container. Stir it. Wait one minute. Stir it. Put it in the refrigerator. And 10 minutes later, it turns to a jello. <laughs> and you take like two or three tablespoons of this and you put it in your shake. What that, what that does is it feeds your brain like a whole salmon meal. Like all the omega-3 you get from a salmon meal, which is the brain is made out of omega-3. So important for intelligence and focus. Mm. So you have omega-3, but it's also in this gel form so that the shake, the one that I make, has two teaspoons of sugar in it. And I believe you need a little sugar to stimulate everything, to stimulate the insulin, to bring it into the brain and so forth. So two teaspoons of sugar, but the gel causes those two teaspoons of sugar to be released over the next five hours. So you get slow release sugar because your brain always needs a little stimulation to absorb the nutrients. The MCT oil, that's from the coconut, the, the extract of coconut, that gives you instant energy. Now, you start with a teaspoon of that and gradually build up to a tablespoon. What, what MCT oils do is if you eat too much in the beginning, you get a stomach ache because MCT oils are made out of caprylic acid and it will kill fungus in your gut. So for some people who have any kind of stress, they have fungus in their gut. MCT caprylic acid will kill that fungus and when it's dying, it gives you kind of a stomach ache. So go little until you have no stomach ache, then increase and increase to a tablespoon yeah. in your superfood shake. And then have another tablespoon during the day and at night have another tablespoon. Yeah, we can find everything on your website, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I, I will try that for one or two months and I will, uh, I will do a blog post. A blog post, that'd yeah. be great, that'd be yeah. great. And in terms of focus, uh, so, many, so many men have ADD, ADHD. The super minerals plus, you know, good superfood shake and vitamin C and grapeseed extract. There's double blind studies just on vitamin C and grapeseed extract yeah. showing it's as good as Ritalin or Adderall. Just that. And no side effects. Ritalin and Adderall have all these side effects. Why not do the natural way? It's such a simple thing, but people don't know because these products are all, you can't patent them, you can't charge high prices for them because there's so much competition. Yeah, I think so. I have, I have a last question for you. It is a weird, a weird question. <laughs> Maybe the first time you have this question. According to you, how we can become a, a couple killer, uh, a loser in relationship? What are the keys to become a, a loser in relationship? Oh my gosh, how you can ruin a relationship. Yeah, I, uh, I would love to know that. Okay. I will the, do some training okay. about that. <laughs> <laughs> the way a man becomes a loser in a relationship yeah. is he becomes overly feminized. Mm -hmm. What are the symptoms of being overly feminized? Is talking about emotions and getting emotionally upset. Yeah. Now it's okay to talk about positive emotions with the woman you're in love with. I, you're so beautiful. I love you so much. I missed you. You're my sweetheart. Oh, I'm so disappointed because I didn't get to see you. Oh my gosh, I care so much for you. These are all feelings, emotions, but they're positive. Yeah. When women say they want feelings from men, they want positive feelings from men. That's what you want to do. Negative emotions is unmanly. 
That's how you destroy a relationship. Great. By whining. <laughs> by just think anytime you complain, yeah. you're being a girl. Okay. It's gonna, and what happens is a little bit here and there to your buddies. Go talk to your guys about this. It's what guys do. We can complain to each other. But if you complain to a woman, you become feminized. She goes, oh, poor baby. Oh, and then she gets mad at you for complaining about her. So what a woman needs to feel more than anything is I can go up and down in my moods. And you'll stand there and you don't get affected by it. And, and you, don't, you don't get upset. You see, so many men get upset. Like, why are you upset? Why are you bothered about this? Because she might complain, oh, you're wearing that outfit. Yeah, I know you don't like this outfit. And that's it. And then she said, well, will you change? Well, as a, since this is your special night out, I'll give you permission to, to suggest what I should wear. But only because it's a special occasion. See, here's how you ruin a relationship. Let's say you get dressed up and you're putting on a tie and you're getting ready to go and she says, oh, that tie doesn't match. And you go, okay, pick out another one. So you, she, you know, you're a guy, you want to please a woman. That's what we're designed to do and make her happy. If it makes her happy, I don't care what kind of tie I wear. So I put on another tie. She likes it. And so then next time I'm getting dressed, I put on a tie. She says, oh, that tie's wrong. You should put on this other tie. So you go and you do it. And once you've done that three times, something happens inside of you. You change, your brain changes. When you're getting ready, now you're gonna pick this tie and you're gonna doubt yourself. And you go, should it be this tie or this tie? And you'll go to her and you'll say, should I wear this tie or this tie? And now you become a girl. This is what women do. I can't make up my mind. What should I wear? Should I wear this or this or this? And that's a good thing for women to be. That's how women are. They're always, their brains are much more busy. You don't wanna become that. You so want to be a, a man. Be, uh, a good way to become a, um, a loser in a, in a relationship. As a man, is to do that. Yeah, is to for, ask, for, ask and, her opinion about everything. And ask for her women, advice. For women. Okay, so the way <laughs> women become losers in relationship, yeah. many ways. I'll just summarize. Complain, correct, control, criticize. <laughs> could be if, a training. That's, if women can just stop complaining, correcting, controlling, criticizing. Why do you do that, women? It only pushes him away. They want you to change. Stop trying to change him. Instead, start changing the way you communicate your needs to him. And what women say, well, if I can't criticize, and I can't <laughs> complain, and I can't it's correct me. him, if she says, how do I get him to change? And I say, that you learn to love. Love him just as he is. And she says, yeah, but can I get more attention? Can I go out more? Can't we get him to pick up his socks? How do, well, you know? I say, yes, you can. That's called asking him to do things. But if you ask him, at first you have to learn how to ask. Yeah. And you have to first be happy before asking works. You can't ask him to do something so that you can become happy. You have to be happy and then ask him to do things to help you, to make you happier. So there's an art to how to motivate men to do more for you. And there's an art men to make women happy and turned on. The way you do it, do you become a loser in a relationship by waiting till Friday night and saying, hey, honey, what do you want to do tonight? And being all loose and relaxed about it. No, you do, it a, it. <laughs> you do a week in advance, you plan, you say, what would you like? What would you like? And then don't argue with her. Yeah. And if three things she likes and you don't want to do any of them, suck it up, be a man. It's only two hours. Go do it for her and don't whine and complain. This is another way men just, they're awful about this. They go out on a date with her that she wanted. Like, let's say you go to the ballet. He's like, oh, how long is this going to go on? He's looking at his watch like this. It's like, and then next time she goes, what, what do I do that will make him happy? Women should not be thinking about what will make you happy. You should be thinking about being true to yourself and how to make her happy. And a romantic date is about her. It's not about you. And, and when you're on that date, don't complain. And she has to learn not to complain. Complaining kills relationships. It makes us all losers. Wow. Another secret. <laughs> yeah, and the, and, the way, and the way men kill a relationship is they argue with women and they get upset at women. Why get upset at her? It doesn't help. It just makes it worse. Understand women are like a wave. It goes up and everything is perfect. No matter how perfect it is, that wave is going to crash. The happiest woman in the world. <laughs> He's going to be unhappy. Don't take it personally. A little story <laughs> to help men that changed my life. It was this the guy by the name of Robert Bly a long time ago was teaching men's groups, teaching men how to be men. And he didn't have real good relationship skills, but that was a good one. And he said, it's a long story I'm going to make shorter. But there was a dragon in the woods and yeah. the key, everybody went into the woods and never came out alive. And the king said, I need a hero to go and save, you know, the kingdom from this dragon. So the old, these brothers came 
The older brother went in. He looked for the dragon all day long. He couldn't find this dragon. As he's about to turn around and come back home, he smells this bread cooking. He was hungry and tired in a little sweet little cabin and lights are on and the bread is sitting there. So he goes in, it smells so good. He takes some of the bread, he <laughs> eats it. He says, mm, this tastes so good. And then a beautiful maiden appears and she says, do you like my bread? He says, yes, I like it very much. And she says, oh, very good, very good. May I have some of my bread? He says, of course. And he hands her the bread and she accidentally drops it. And she says, would you pick it up? He says, certainly. And he picks up the bread and when he comes up, she's turned into a wicked witch with a, with a, with a, with a club and beats him to death. <laughs> That's what happens in relationships. Women just beat men to death. They turn into witches and beat them to death. So the next brother comes in, same thing happens. Then the youngest comes in, pure heart, love open. He comes in, the same thing happens. He's taking her bread. He's enjoying the bread. She appears and she says, oh, you like my bread? He says, yes, it's very good. And, and she says, may I have some of the bread? She says, oh, of course. And he hands her the bread. She drops the bread. She says, would you pick it up? He says, bread is symbolic of life and death. We are all responsible for our lives. We can't depend on another for that. So you'll have to pick up the bread. And she picks up the bread and she doesn't turn into a witch and they live happily ever after. <laughs> this is what men have to learn. We don't pick up the bread for women. And in our relationships today, what that means is we're not responsible to make her happy. Because if we think we're responsible to make her happy, then every time she's unhappy, we feel blamed. Yeah. We feel like we failed. It's inevitable. My wife's one of the happiest women in the world. She has everything, everything, and every other day. <laughs> She's upset about something. I go, oh, may I help you with that? You know, it's just a, a simple, easy response or just don't say anything. And then if they say, what are you thinking? This is what you say. <laughs> I'm thinking you do so many wonderful things for so many people. Let me give you a hug. See, that's the opposite. No man would ever think to say that. He'd be saying, don't do so much for everybody. Don't worry about this stuff. Who cares if we're late? <laughs> and like, don't say those things. It's great. We ruin it <laughs> by trying, because when we say those things, it makes her feel bad for having those feelings instead yeah. of like it's part of life. And then a woman starts to feel safe that, oh my God, I don't have to be this perfect, smiling woman all the time. Then she can be authentic, passionate, alive. And you can be like a, 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 an oak tree, which is capable of being present for her. And by connecting with her and loving her, increases the passion in you, but not becoming like a girl. Yeah, it's great.